Brewing espresso is really difficult, and brewing really good espresso is even more so. And I think my last few videos have really kind of shown that with a lot of these advancements that we have in our understanding. And even though they might seem to make just a minute change, all of these small changes can improve our end cup quality. Over the years, there have been a lot of people, mostly home enthusiasts, who have been running loads of experiments in order to figure out the best way to move forward. So I'm going to be looking at a few of these experiments, one by Stefan Ribe, which we have looked at a few times, but we'll look at in more depth today with his cookie cutter experiment he did in 2020, and then again in 2021 with puck screens added. We're going to look at decent user Mike LePenny's data, where he has built what he calls a flota filter in order to see what the water is like coming out of the screen during that filling of the headspace. And then we're also going to take a look at Rohan, who's someone that I've talked about a lot on this channel. He's helped me a lot. He's a Patreon of mine, and he uh, did an experiment on, on my request where he was looking at edge under extraction with different types of dispersion blocks as well as baskets and styles of shots. These things are really good for us to understand, and that's why I'm here trying to make sure that there is a megaphone to it so people know the issues inherently in our espresso extraction, whether it's our preparation ourselves or whether it is the equipment that we are using. Due to the high amount of pressure, the finely ground coffee, the tamped bed, all of these things make water flow being even really, really difficult, especially with how chaotic coffee seems to be when grinding that finely, with a particle size range from down to one micron up to 300 microns or whatever the biggest boulder might be. So we're already fighting a somewhat losing battle. But that battle becomes even more difficult when we see that there are elements that we've taken for granted for so long. Good grief, Lance, you're complicating espresso again. What you need to understand about all these experiments that I'm doing, that the community is doing, is not necessarily to complicate your life. Based off of some of these tests that are done in the decent community, there are new innovations coming out in the next year or so that is going to help us so that we don't have to think about it anymore. Now, it's no secret that our putt preparation is a big thing. That's something that's been harped on for many years, a few decades now. It's no secret that temperature variation has an impact on your espresso. But there are other things that we have not yet considered that are kind of built into espresso machines and haven't been questioned very much. And one of those is your shower screen and your dispersion block. What some of these experiments show us is a lot of shower screens tend to be pretty inefficient. So what I have here, two different dispersion blocks for the decent espresso machine, and I have an IMS competition shower screen. Water enters the dispersion block in order to disperse into the screen so that it can shower out over it. We know if there's like massive lumps of water coming out in different directions, that that's probably not good. We want it to be as even as possible. So when we look at this, the diameter of it is about... 51 millimeters. We have 58 millimeter surface area, but only 51 or so 50 millimeters of coverage from the screen. Which you might think that's not a big deal. Once the water fills the headspace, it's going to just turn into a compression of all the water going through evenly. And you would be sort of right. But also, we have proof that that's also not completely the story. Because of some of these experiments going on and the fear of under extraction on the edges, they created a prototype with Teflon of a new dispersion block. I have said in many videos that donut shots are not fundamentally wrong. When the shots are coming around and they start around the edges of the basket, that logically it must be over extracting the edges. You want that bottom to be filled all together simultaneously for an even extraction. But that's not necessarily the case. This was proven by Stefan Ribes with his cookie cutter method back in 2020 with radial extraction. He would take a cookie cutter, he would cut a puck after it was extracted, and then he would extract the remaining solubles in the spent puck to see how much was left over from the center versus the outer edge. He did show that puck screens aided in that edge extraction. A lot of people, because their fear of donut shots made them think it was a bad extraction, they started making these, you know, concave tampers. So when you went in, it was going to push the center down more, the edges up higher, so that you would have a more even filling of the bottom of that basket, the traditional basket, where the holes aren't all the way to the edges. Stefan showed that when you use a convex tamper, the edges are even more horribly under extracted, down to like 6% or so. 
because now you're encouraging even more so a center flow when it's already being encouraged just by the build of the machine, the build of the basket. So Rohan did the same thing. He was using about 15 to 16 second shots for his turbo shots with his super jolly he has with a 64 millimeter multi-purpose burst from SSP. He was using 35 to 45 second shots with his niche zero with pre-infusion and all of that good stuff using both a VST basket, 18 grams, and a Swarx high flow precision basket. And he also did some puck screens. Took a cookie cutter and he would cut the center out. He would take the edge, put it in one aluminum basket. He would take the center and put it in another. And he baked them at 250 Fahrenheit, I don't remember how long exactly, to uh, rebrew them. So he would rebrew it with a clever using a one to 20 ratio and he would measure the extraction and then he could do maths in order to figure out what was left over from the outer edge versus the center. There was a big discrepancy. The center is always, always, always preferred with a traditional basket. And what we know for certain from this experiment is that the center is consistently the most extracted part of the puck regardless. The edges are horribly suffering. So what you see on these graphs here is the edges are extracting around 13 or 14 percent. And you're like, well, it's just the edge. That's such a thin little margin. But what you have to consider is these graphs are showing you what the cross section would look like. So if you cut a puck in half and you look at just the edge, it has the biggest circumference. So that mass is much more than you think, 30%. So if we were doing say 20 gram puck, 30% of that would be six grams of coffee that are extracting down at that 14%. And then the center is extracting a ton. With these shower screens, with traditional shots, you're consistently getting edge under extraction, especially in traditional baskets. We see that modern baskets, these kind of ones where the bottom surface area is much wider, it almost matches the surface area on the top so there's more space for the water to run through, it almost fully alleviates a lot of those problems. It's still not up to where the center is extracting at, but it's very close. What we also notice is when you add a puck screen on top, it also improves the flow rate to the edges. Whenever he moved to the turbo shots though, what we see is a much more even flow throughout the whole puck regardless of the basket, regardless of having a puck screen. So turbo shots seem to alleviate a lot of this issue around the edges. So what we've noticed in these experiments with 95% error bars is that the puck screen, not only is it not bad for the coffee, if the flow is even like on those turbo shots, it doesn't really affect it negatively or positively. If the flow is bad though, it improves it and helps with edge extraction. Mike LaPenny, with his testing, he used this flow to filter, which here's a picture of that. So he 3D printed this and he was able to measure the water coming in during that headspace filling. And what he discovered was actually pretty unique. At four and a half milliliters a second using an IMS screen, that edge was very underfilled and that C radian, that was also pretty underfilled. When we increased it to 12 milliliters a second, however, that radian C was a lot more equalized with the center. The edges were still pretty low, but that's because during that pre-wetting, this is a lot smaller than the puck is. Because his measurement tool doesn't do full extraction, it's only really doing that headspace filling, we're seeing that there is a clear preference for the center, but with a higher flow rate, you objectively are getting more even flow through the puck which is showing you that fast fill is preferred over slow fill for a more even extraction. Water always wants to go the path of least resistance. At the beginning, you have droplets coming out and it's hitting different areas of the puck. And if there's any weak spot, which weak spots are formed once it's wetted, the water will immediately want to rush there. Then once it's pressurized, it will start to form these types of channels. When you have a slower fill, you have more time for it to really find those areas and fill it out. When you have a faster fill rate, there's not as much nucleation, there's not as much area for it to really overexpose. So it's more evenly centering out that water. Higher extraction, it's not higher extraction equals better taste. It's higher extraction, all things held equal, is showing a more even extraction through the puck. It means we're not getting 25 in the center and 14 on the edges. It means that likely we're getting like 23 in the center, 23 on the edges with lower time. So then you can lessen your extraction if you want and you'll have a much more holistic experience. In fact, I don't prefer higher extractions. Give me a solid 20 or 21, maybe 22% extraction espresso, I'm a happy camper. 
I just want it to taste good. And usually I'm getting better tastes when I have the most even setup as possible. Since it seems that more even extractions tend to taste better, we might want to try to rethink how we're setting up these shower screens or these baskets. All right, Lance, I'm lost. Dude, you, you're going too fast. That's too much information you're throwing at me. What is the importance of all this? Well, first of all, as I said, we're not chasing high extraction. That's not the point of all of these innovations or experimentations. The point is to ensure that we're understanding what's going on in order to help make the right fixes in manufacturing and in our understanding our approach to espresso extraction to make better improvements going forward. If you do have one of those, you know, modern baskets, you can rest assured that that edge under extraction is not as big of a deal. So if you're getting a donut shot, maybe it isn't the greatest thing. But again, what was used in Rohan's testing was the Swarks basket and their holes go even closer to the edge. So maybe with something like the Posada or the Wafer or the Weber, maybe that edge potential over extraction in comparison to the center is not as big of a deal, but that's just kind of speculation. Those baskets tend to really help with those edge extractions, which is going to force us to rethink how we pull espresso. You cannot apply the same old, same old traditional ratios and time limits when you're extracting with these newer baskets because it is a completely different extraction. Those edges are no longer way low in the center, way high. It's now more even across that puck. you're gonna to want to do something a little different. You won't need as much time. Maybe the texture will be a little bit down. You could do a finer grind, but you would pull a much shorter ratio because you don't need as much water to get as much of an even extraction across that puck. So there's a different approach. We're dealing with a different game altogether. It's kind of like if you've ever extracted coffee that wasn't Arabica, like a Eugenoides or a Liberica or something like that. If you approach those with the same mindset of Arabica, you'll have terrible results. You cannot approach it using the same time parameters, the same ratios, the same kind of mindset when you're using those coffees. We're now unlocking something that has not previously been unlocked. A bottom paper filter, as we showed in previous videos, will help you with your traditional baskets extract more on those edges, but it's not going to do the same as a modern basket. It will help it though. Screens need to have a relook just because it looks like it's really good coming out and just because you think that evenness all around is ideal, maybe that's not what we need to be doing. Maybe it needs to have a concentration around the edges because this is always going to be undersized to the basket based off the way that group heads are designed puck screens are going to be helpful. So if you're someone that doesn't want to fool around with cleaning a puck screen, that's fine. You don't need it. Maybe use a paper filter on top or nothing at all. Doesn't really matter. But the puck screen is going to help you with some of that edge under extraction, a la Rohan's data. We didn't know that temperature was important until a home barista wired a PID controller on their home machine. We didn't know that puck distribution was that important until John Weiss took a needle and started playing around with it. And now we have a focus on that. We didn't know about temperature volatility and their effect on volatile organic compounds until more recently when studies were coming towards that. And now we have things that can meet that criteria. We have temperature profiling and different things, all because we had people who were willing to put themselves out there, experiment to discover and to glean knowledge on what is previously unknown. There's so much more to be found out and there's so much more needing to be studied and examined. And all of it is with the goal of a better cup of espresso, a better cup of coffee, less waste, more efficiency, all with the goal of expanding this to everyone out there. So I hope that you appreciate this video. I hope that you can learn something from it, maybe implement something from it in your home workflow, whether it's adding a puck screen, or maybe you switch from doing a low flow fill rate because you now understand that it's worsening that edge under extraction and just this, the variation of the stratification of the extraction throughout the puck. Maybe it'll help you understand the overall importance of keeping your puck screen really clean because in the end, even droplets will be better than three streams coming out because you're not keeping it clean and there's oil residue or there's coffee ground stuck behind it. 
So I just wanna thank so much to Mike Lapini from the Decent Forum who allowed me to use his data for this. I wanna thank Rohan for doing this insane amount of work with drying all these pucks and taking all these measurements over the last few months. And I wanna thank Stefan for you know being a trendsetter here with the cookie cutter technique. He may not have been the first to do it, but he's the earliest that I know of back in 2020. So thank you for that data. Thank you to Dr. Jonathan Gagne who helped me with data analysis and for just all of them all together, pushing the industry forward and helping us understand all of this. And I think that's about it for today. Now you can go put an ice pack on your brain because I'm sure it's been exploded just a little bit. And uh, beyond that, I hope you brew something tasty today. And cheers.